Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nico. I'm a third year medical student and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you live using a passage, the method that got my MCAT score, specifically the car section from a 127 from a 122 to a 127. I want this video to be helpful for you guys and I don't want it to be too long. So let's go straight to my computer so you can see the method. If you want more explanation as to why I do passages this way or why I found it helpful, make sure to check out the other video that I made where I give a more detailed explanation as to why I did passages this way. And with that being said, let's go straight onto the passage. Okay guys, so we are going to be doing this passage that has five questions. When we start off with the passage, the first thing you wanna do is take a deep breath in deep breath out, and forget anything that happened prior to the passage. All the answers for the next five, six, seven questions are somewhere in this passage. All you need is a clear mind so that you can think and reason through all of the questions. And with that being said, the second thing you have to do is look at the top left and look at how many questions are in your passage. So in this method, you are actually going to read the questions first and then read the passage. And it's really important to note that by reading the questions first, I don't wanna encourage you guys to skim around in the passage looking for answers. The whole point of reading the questions first is just so that you have a better focus when you go in and read the passage. So you can just hone in and hyper-focus when you see the, the keywords that we're going to pick out from the questions as I'm going to explain now. So what we're going to do is look at the top left as I just mentioned and look that we have questions 23 to 27. So write on your piece of paper, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. Once you have that done, let's go ahead and skim the questions. So this question, when you see a longer, you know, a longer question stem, try to go to the end and see what is the root question. The root question is how does this relate to the author's view of obedience to authority? So I'm really gonna write obedience, obedience, and I'm gonna put the number two, authority. This is like chicken scratch, like you just are writing quick notes. And that's it. That's all we have for question 23. The next question, which of the following would be considered acts of disobedience as, as the term is used in paragraph two? So we're going to write P2. I'm just gonna write disobedience. So I know that when I see the word disobedience in paragraph two, I need to slow down and I can answer that question as soon as I finish paragraph two. Question 25, as used by the author, absence of compulsion, paragraph four. So I'm gonna write P4 absence. Maybe I'll write like C-O-M-P for compulsion. Okay. Question 26. Which of the following would most weaken the author's claim about obedience to authority? So I'm just going to write M-I slash A-O. This just means it's an author's opinion, main idea question. I save these for last. And next we have question 27, the primary purpose of paragraph three. So we're just going to write P-3-M-I. So now you wanna just take a quick break, look at your list. We're gonna be looking for something in paragraph two, paragraph three, paragraph four, a main idea that we say for last. And question 23 is about the obedience to authority. So with that being said, let's read the first paragraph. You guys can pause this video at this time so you can read the first paragraph. And when you're ready, just continue. So once you finish the first paragraph, we have an understanding of what it is to to, I guess you could say, to be obedient. So if we go to question 23, suppose that a pilot in a nation's air force is ordered to bomb a civilian population and despite having serious moral reservations, complies with the order without expressing any objections. How does this relate to the author's view on obedience to authority? And just from reading paragraph one, we can see that the author says that uh, behavior that is unthinkable in an individual who is acting in his own violation may execute without hesitation when carried out under order. So this is pretty much the same thing that the author is saying. This is just an, an example of what is said in paragraph one. So we can say it would be consistent with the author's view. If we moved forward, we could see that it talks about the history of carrying out orders, um, if the pilot had a history of refusing to carry out orders, the author doesn't really talk about this. So I answer this question just with the first paragraph. I will keep in mind though, by the time I finish all the paragraphs, that I might need to go back and change my answer. But right now I'm feeling confident with it. Now we're gonna go to paragraph two and from our question map, we have 
question 24. We know P2 and we're looking for the word disobedience. So I'm going to go to question 24 and read, okay, which of the following would be considered acts of disobedience as this term is used in paragraph 2. So now I'm going to go to paragraph 2 and when I see acts of disobedience, I'm going to read that question, that sentence, the sentence above it, the sentence below it, or the question that the or the sentence that comes right after it. And then from there, I need to answer the question um, and I should have all the information I need. So at this point, pause the video and when you finish, just continue so we can discuss paragraph two. Okay, so in the very last sentence, we see it says, all musing prior to this moment is mere speculation and all acts of disobedience are characterized by such a moment of decisive action. So acts of disobedience are when a person must decide in that moment if they are going to be obedient or disobedient. And with that being said, let's go on to the option choices. And if you read all the option choices, you can see that option C is the only one where a soldier who refuses to harm a civilian, even though the soldier's commanding officer has ordered that the civilian be shot as a spy. So this is the only option choice where a person in the moment of having to make a decision decides to not uh, be obedient. And uh, and in a direct way. And that is why this is the answer to uh, question 24. Next, we're going to move on to paragraph three. And if you remember from our question map, paragraph three was question 27. So if we go to question 27, it says the primary purpose of the third paragraph. So all we have to do right now is get the main idea of this one paragraph. And with that being said, you can pause the video and then continue once you finish the third paragraph. Okay, so once you finish paragraph three, you can then summarize in your own mind what was going on, and then you can look at the option choices. And if you do that, you can see that the author is talking about when we move to the laboratory. So, okay, a person may be obedient or not obedient in real life, but how can this be replicated in a laboratory, if at all? And that is exactly what C is saying. Consider the extent to which obedience might be empirically studied. So now we just answered question 27. So we have question 23, 24, and 27 done. All we need is two more, uh, two more questions to be completed. 26 was a main idea, and 25 was uh, paragraph four from what I have written on my, um, on my like question map. Because we have that under question map, let's just read question 25 real quick as used by the author, the phrase absence of compulsion. So when we see the term absence of compulsion, we wanna focus in on those sentences and then we wanna see if we can answer the question. And just like with the other paragraphs, just pause the video and continue when you finish paragraph four. Okay, so for paragraph four, you can see that absence of compulsion is present in the very first sentence. So right after finishing that sentence and the sentence after it, we should be able to answer the question. And the author is saying when there isn't compulsion, when there is absence of compulsion, obedience is colored by cooperative mode. So there's some type of agreement um, that is given from the person who is obeying and the person who is given the order. So if we look at the option choices, the one that best correlates with that is B, obedience that is voluntarily given to one superior. Um, and that comes from that word cooperative. And if you look at the other option choices, you can also eliminate that. One of the things I would do all the time is just write down A, B, C, D, E, and then cross out all the wrong ones, and you will always be left with one or two that will be the correct answer. All that's really left is question 26, which is the main idea. So just finish up the paragraph, and let's see if we can answer question 26. So now that you finished the paragraph, let's read the option choices for, qu for question 26, which is a main idea question. Which of the following findings would most weaken the author's claim in the passage about obedience to authority? And for these, I like to cross out all the wrong answers. A study that concludes that most obedience to authority is motivated by fear. That was said in the passage directly, so we can cross that out. Answer choice B doesn't have anything to do with the passage itself. The author never talked about authority figures acting morally or immorally. So this one is just like, I would just say out of scope and we can eliminate B. A study that shows that disobedience is a gradual process that involves more than a single decision. So this doesn't seem to be in correlation with what the author was saying, but let's just look at option D to make sure we can cross it out. A study that asserts that people with a college education are less likely to obey authority figures than those 
with only a high school education. The author does not talk about high school education, college education, or education at all. So this is also out of scope, just like B, and we can eliminate it. And with that being said, the answer is C. To summarize, what you wanna do is take a deep breath, look at how many questions are in the passage, map them out. Once you map out all the questions by looking for key words and seeing where you need to look for the information in the passage, then you go to the passage itself, slowing down and hyper-focusing when you get to those buzzwords and you answer the questions right there and then as you're reading the passage. And by the end of the passage, all you have left are your main idea or author opinion questions. That's everything I have for you guys. If you have any questions, make sure to comment them down below. I really hope that this video was helpful for you guys and make sure to click that like button if you're already here, if you're at this part of the video. And if you wanna see more videos about MCAT, medical school life, pre-med life, just make sure to click that subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.